to the biodesign community. Come with us and imagine an old growth oak forest. One that is complex, biodiverse and undisturbed by colonial impact. Once upon a time, New York City looked just like this and was a forest within the Lenape Hoking region. The forest was lush with life, human and non-human. This is where we are now. And here is what is being dreamt up for our urban environments in the future. Can we honor our past as we build the future? Could we create a forest city? How would such a drastic change start to occur? As a team, we're interested in what happens right after the now. These types of questions fall within the field of transition design, which recognizes the interconnectedness of social, economic, and natural systems to create solutions, transitioning our world into the one we want to see. These are also questions that call for transdisciplinary design, which is to say it involves all of us in each of our fields to imagine alternative futures through design-led research tools and methods to address the most urgent issues and challenges of our time. We are Serial Space. We come from diverse backgrounds in design and policy within the new school here in New York City, and we've come together through biodesign to create a set of clear guiding principles that allow for more transparent, ethical, and just biodesign practices. We will exemplify these principles with a case study that reimagines urban spaces, starting a social movement to rewild our city. Our name, Serial Space, comes from the idea of a series, which when paired with space speaks to a concept of a space that engages in the evolving story of a community, where space is a medium for a series of ideas, episodes, or events. In these next 10 minutes, we want to show you that we do not have to look to scientific and technological innovations to design the future first. What we need is to restore and reclaim what has been devalued, destroyed and nearly lost to quote unquote civilization and progress. And in this process of restoration and reclamation, we must ask ourselves, whose is this to claim? Who needs to be involved? And who should be leading? At this time, systemic change is upon us. Our communities and cities, our common spaces are in a time of episodic crises and there are outcries all around us to reimagine and rebuild the world anew. We believe the only way to do this is to ensure our future is designed for the people and by the people. And we believe that the only way to move forward is to understand where we have come from through our project, we are calling on all of you to step outside of the lab and academia and onto the streets. We especially challenge practitioners of biodesign to question assumptions about who has authority and who gets to be involved in designing with living matter. We are proposing the following biodesign community and environment principles. When designing, we commit to one, restore and preserve communities and their environments through our processes as well as our outcomes. Two, invest and directly involve the interests and expertise of local communities and their environments through knowledge exchange, co-creation and ongoing relationship. And three, respect the inherent rights of Mother Earth, all life forms and the indigenous way of life on the land we practice on. So how would these values and commitments be represented within a project? To illustrate, we present a case study, rewilding. Rewilding is a large scale conservation movement. In our urban context, in one of the world's most densely populated cities, rewilding is about bringing life supporting native plants with all their genetic diversity back into public spaces. Native plants include all the species that were around long before 1609 when Henry Hudson first discovered Lenape territory. 
These species are actually in decline in New York City, and only 62% of plants currently found in the city are native. A decrease in biodiversity means a decrease in ecosystem resiliency. We must plant native to deliver ecological services such as carbon sequestration, food and shelter for wildlife, and retention and cleaning of stormwater. According to the New York City Parks Department, increasing native biodiversity cannot be accomplished by cramming them into our parks. So we must get creative on where we plant. Could the next phase for a city for the people and by the people look more like this? The first step in a series of interventions involves first personally inviting friends and community residents to come together and grow native plants all around the city. We want to invite you and your community to rewild your neighborhood. This card is an invitation to come to a meetup to grow native plants. The first event could start with planting along a sidewalk or organizing around landscaping in a vacant lot. It can be anywhere and everywhere. The card is also embedded with the plantable seeds of a local native plant that you can plant yourself at home or bring to the meetup. By using this seed paper, we address our first principle through responsible and restorative practices within our process. We designed the postcard so you can also send one half to a friend. We are building a committed social network of mutual friends while also reviving the practice of sending handwritten cards via mail for a digital generation. We also look to existing street interventions as a way to invite anyone from the public and expand the social network ensuring an investment in the local community, our second principle. This is a street pull tab flyer where you can either scan the QR code that directs to our site or text a number to get in touch for information about the planting meetup. The invitation system works not only by directing people to a website with meetups to take this movement to the streets, but also provides resources on native plants, information on related community organizations, and suggest tangible everyday actions for people to rewild their homes and communities. The education around native plants upholds our third principle by prioritizing Mother Earth in her indigenous state. Rewilding as a way to design the future requires a vision for communities and by communities. We, as Serial Space, are merely sending the invitation but it is up to all of us, including you, your friends, and your neighbors, to come together, decide the terms, and write the story. Rewilding in this way not only upholds and seeks to restore native life forms, but values the knowledge and experiences of people from all walks of life. We believe that biodesign is often too limited to the realms of academic discipline, and that we need to do better by expanding the invitation list of who gets to participate in shaping the future. We argue that without meeting people where they are at, biodesign will continue to reproduce the exploitative and extractive practices of the current capitalist regime. Without instilling clear ethical principles into our practices, we as biodesigners will rely too heavily on the exact mechanisms that have led us to the Anthropocene, an epoch in which the Earth's systems are literally being altered by human activity. When we make new, we have a responsibility to first recognize and learn from our past and more fully understand the present. Biodesign can better withstand the challenges of our time under a set of timeless principles. Designing with life on the basis of respect, relationship, and restoration and within each process, cultivation, cooperation, and care. These ideals are embedded deep in our heritage and collective experience within the natural world. Every time we feed another being, learn from another species, plant a seed, or tend to the soil so that life can thrive and reproduce. For centuries and millennia, designing with life has been less about inventing the new through synthetic biology and more about connections on the ground at eye level, witnessing life and death and life reborn again and again. Thank you and sincerely signed, Serial Space.